Okay, welcome back everybody. This is another episode of Photoshop User TV brought to you by Kelby One, the fine folks that bring us whoosh, Photoshop User Magazine where you can get all kinds of great articles about Photoshop and the great stuff in there. I'm Pete Collins, one of the Photoshop guys, and I'm here with the incomparable Corey Barker. I was going to go mute this episode, but I decided not to. <laughs> Become so. the Photoshop mime. The Photoshop mime. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode. So, how are you? Doing well. Mm -hmm. And I tell you what, one of the things that we're trying to do with these shows is to jump right in and give you tips right off the bat. So, what we're going to do is throw it right over to Corey. Because the he's banter is just boring. Yeah, y'all don't really care about that. So, you we're going to jump the, right in. Of course, Corey, the only people that are entertained by our banter are us, each other. So, I'm going to um, dive right in. Now, I'm actually going to do something, a little bit of something from my book, Down and Dirty Tricks uh, for Designers, Volume 2. It's available and lovely. It's right here. Look, if you haven't seen it. All right. So, what I want to do is a little thing from the book where we're going to talk about just generating a kind of illustrated look on a photo. It's, this is a cool technique if you've got a photo of a model or even just a snapshot and you're not necessarily happy with it as it is. You want to do something, you want to do some treatment to it to make it, make it work in a design. So we'll start with a background, and we've just got this simple textured background here. And we'll open up our model shot. And I'm going to use a different image that I used in the book just to kind of do this. And the great thing about this technique is it's really, really quick. You can actually do this, um, just spend a few minutes on it, and it looks like some, you've spent some, a great deal of time on it. So simply take our photo of our model and just drag and drop it over. And it's enormous resolution, so we're going to go ahead and scale it. So we'll put it in free transform by pressing Command or Control T. And of course, remember that cool trick, Command Zero, will expand the document out so you can see your transform box. Now, adding the Shift key and the Option key will allow me to scale it to the center proportionately there. I'm just going to position this right about here. Let's make it a little bit bigger right there. All right. Now, Everybody knows that when I'm playing around in Photoshop, I love filters. Now, I go in there and I just really experiment with filters all the time because there's a whole bunch of them in Photoshop. You go into the filter menu and look at all these categories of um, filters that you have here. Now, if you don't see it the way I do, which many of you probably don't, because by default, it doesn't appear that way. If you go into your preferences, I'm just kind of taking off a little tangent here, but go to, to your plugins preferences, and you can actually show all filter gallery groups and names. So that allows you to see everything in there. Otherwise, you would have to go to the filter gallery, open up that separate panel, you know that big giant panel, and then you look for the other special effects filters that way. This checked on will show all the filters under the uh, filter menu here. There you go. So what I want to do first is remove the color. So I'm going to actually go ahead and just do Shift-Command-U. It's a quick little keyboard trick for just desaturating the image. Then go to Filter go to Texture, and choose Grain. Now, inside the Grain filter, you have um, this menu for Grain Type. You've got a number of different ones here. Now, most of these are, are pretty darn silly, to be honest. They, they actually give you really crappy results. But one I found the most interesting to me is this one called Speckle. So if I select that, you'll notice it kind of gives this kind of, almost like a pen and ink, you know, dabbing. You know, a type, schmeckle of a, a speckle. A schmeckle of a speckle. So you can adjust that um, with your intensity and contrast sliders. And notice I can just uh, boost up the intensity there just a little bit. I'm just going to do that. She almost has like an evil smile, doesn't it? She mm -hmm. just kind of isolate it here. It just kind of looks like she's just, eh. All right. So I um, think I like that. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And then I'm going to change the blend mode of this layer to multiply. Now already, this looks dramatically different than what we started with. We had a simple image. And it uh, actually blends in pretty well. Now in multiply mode, however, though, you can still see that black and white. It's not quite saturated with color. So here's a cool trick. Do Command or Control U and bring up your hue saturation dialog here. And then check on Colorize. And then just kind of match the hue of the background. And that way it'll help blend it a little bit more. So see that difference? It looks less like a black and white graphic sitting on top and you know, just blending the best it can. It actually is blending nicely because of the color it's picking up. So there we have that. Now. You can take it another uh, step further if you wanted. Add a new layer and put a soft light blend mode on that. Now, there's nothing on the layer right now, but if you just go and grab a brush, not that gigantic, that is in a later episode. <laughs> you kind of just got a quick preview of what I'm going to do in a future episode of Photoshop User, but not right now. All right, so down here, we're going to make this brush considerably smaller. 
And I'm on that layer, soft light blend mode, and painting with white. And we're just going to dab in some highlights. Just to kind of help define the shape so it doesn't look a, as flat. So we're just bringing in back in some highlight detail. We'll just brighten the eyes up a little bit. And there we pretty much have it. So we've taken that simple photo and gone ahead and just through a couple of uh, simple layer tricks, giving it a kind of illustrated look that you can add you know, some text and design, just kind of give it a, an overall finished look. And that looks pretty good. So again, that's in the book in tremendously more detail, but you can see how quick and easy it is. I just did that in a matter of minutes, and you can actually have a, a pretty decent design in the end. So there you have it. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's cool. And the nice thing is, is it, it really is just a couple quick things. Once you get used to doing that process, it'd be one of those things that mm -hmm. you kind of go back to over and over again when you're stuck. Hey, mm -hmm. let's try this. Exactly. And well, just one more point is that, you know, those things don't have to be long and drawn out to be clever or anything like that. Oftentimes, it's the simplest, most elegant solutions that um, will give you the best results. So uh, be, well, be aware of that. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I've got a little background tip for you, and we're going to talk about Photoshop World, so we'll be right back. Cool. Get the world's best photography, lighting, and Photoshop training at Photoshop World. Here's the top 10 reasons you should attend. It's three nonstop days of real world training where you can get personal attention and unlimited access to the world's top instructors in Photoshop and photography. When you attend, you'll have chances to experience hands-on live shoots and workshops, outrageous after hours parties and events, and hundreds of classes for all skill levels, along with dozens of opportunities to network with other attendees. In-depth one-on-one portfolio reviews from industry professionals and see new cutting edge technology. Plus, you can even earn continuing education and graduate level credits from attending. This is the must attend conference for photographers and Photoshop users. Use the promo code to get an extra $50 off. Photoshop World, the world's best Photoshop and photography conference. Well, hi everyone, welcome back to Photoshop User TV. I am Corey Barker and I'm joined here with Mr. Pete Collins. Gonna have a little trick for us here in just a moment. But as you just saw, we just are getting really excited around here because of Photoshop World coming up in Atlanta on April 8th. Of course, myself, Pete, and all the rest of the guys are gonna be there, a who's who of Photoshop and photography. A Absolutely. veritable cornucopia. A cornucopia indeed, of course. And um, we've got class of three days of just unbelievable stuff. I don't know how many I've been to at this point. I mean, you've certainly been to enough of them. I mean, you just never get tired of it. It's just the community alone is worth it alone. I mean, if you've gone, you get, if you've stopped going, and you, if you've gone before and you think, well, I've learned everything I'm going to learn, it's not really worth going anymore, it is. I mean, I, 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 mean, I always felt like I didn't, wasn't going to learn much after several, going to several of them. But there's new teachers. There's just new new. It's new, new stuff. It's new stuff. Well, and the whole thing is, is, is there's this sense of uh, camaraderie and networking mm. that goes on there that you can't meet anywhere else. Mm. You can't beat anywhere else. Yeah, exactly. You go there and you find people that have the same interest and, as you. And you have access to, to people like Canon and Adobe. I mean, you can go right up to these people and ask them questions about yeah. the product you use every day. I mean, it's, it's really a great opportunity. So be sure to check that out at PhotoshopWorld.com. So continuing on, Mr. Pete Collins has got a very cool texture on his screen. I am all too curious. <laughs> Well, one of the things I want to do is I've done some classes over at Kelby One about the different tools that you use in Photoshop. And the thing is that uh, I find that sometimes it's those tools that you kind of overlook sometimes that can be very helpful for other things. And so even though we have labeled before the magic wand, the tragic wand, I wanted to show you just a couple things that you can do with it that may add a little bit of a creative boost to what you're doing. First thing I want to do is come in here and I've got this texture. I use this texture all the time. This is just a simple stock image for my stock photo. Uh, and it's got all these funky colors and stuff like that, but a lot of times I'll desaturate, I'll do other things to it to use it as a texture because it's just so cool. But for this one, what I want to show you is how you can use the magic wand to pull out all kinds of neat stuff. First off, the thing that you need to realize is that you've got a couple options here that can make a difference in how the wand is going to work. Point sample is simply going to grab that one specific pixel underneath your magic wand tool to sample. Whereas 3x3 three three average is what I tend to keep my uh, 
my settings on because what it does is if I'm just off by a pixel or two, it can really change the settings, but a three by three average figures out what the, the major color is in that three by three pixel box and it gives me a more accurate grab of what's going on. Because if you've seen, a lot of times, just being off by one pixel can change things dramatically. So you can go even, even larger than that if you want. I don't know why you'd ever use 100 by 100 average. I've never gone above 5 by 5 to yeah. myself. Yeah. But then the one that a lot of people don't realize is this tolerance right here makes a huge difference on how it works. Let me show you something. I'm going to go down to 1 or 0. Yeah, 0 is what I want. 2 is good enough. And if I go to pick on this right here, if you can see, it just grabbed a little section right here. Of course, let's do this. I'm going to turn off contiguous. What contiguous means is it's only going to grab the stuff that's connected to it. All the colors that work in the same spot and are connected together. If I turn this off, now watch what happens. It'll find all those colors throughout the entire scene. So that's a, an important thing to realize. Is contiguous turned on or off? That's and often then, a gotcha. That has it, gotten me. Yeah, it's yeah. a big gotcha. And, and it, can become a very effective thing if you realize what you can do with it. Now if I take this tolerance, you can go all the way up to 255. If you know anything about Photoshop, the colors go from 0 to 255. So as soon as I hit 255 and I click, it picks up every color on the screen. It basically is a select all. So you want to dial this up and down according to how much of a, a, a grouping you want. You want to grab more colors, you go up higher in your tolerance. You want less, you go lower in your tolerance. Well, the reason why I like the magic wand is because it kind of adds this chaos factor when I want to create some interesting backgrounds or I want to add some texture to an image. And what happens is I come in here and I'll set this tolerance usually around something like 30% and I'll click on it and it'll just grab certain areas there. I can now hold my shift button down and go over here and grab another section and maybe another section here. If it grabs too much, I can always hold down my alt or option button and subtract some stuff out. Now what I will do is I'll take and turn on my contiguous and I don't like how much it grabbed over in this section. So I'll just subtract out some and it's just taking chunks back out. And what I can do is I can eventually grab a section that I like that's totally random and by hitting Command or Control J, I jump that up on its own layer. And now you've seen I've pulled out this kind of grungy element that's got this whole weird chaos factor to it that, that's happening right there just from that one simple background. I can come in and do it again, change a few of my parameters. Let's take that off and just come in here. And now I've got a second set of, of background images. What you can see is now I can take that and grab it and pull it over into something, uh, something like this. Now what I'll do is I want to kind of grunge up this picture. I can bring this over the top of it and lay it on top. It doesn't look that great right now, but if I turn on my move tool and now using my shift and my plus or minus key, I can toggle through the blend modes and something surprising may come out of this. I may get to the point where I go, ooh, that's kind of cool. Uh, or, or something like that. I can all of a sudden start adding the, these random background textured images just by simply grabbing my magic wand, going over, grabbing a couple things, and uh, just laying them on top. I can do the same thing over here. I grab another one. Let's add a few more things in here. Command J. All right, I grabbed way too much there, so let's try it again. Lower this down. All right, I think I like that better. Now I'm going to drag that over, and I can just start laying stuff on top of my image and creating all kinds of funky textures to really age and give my, my photo a different kind of look. Don't forget you change your, your blend mode, but also your opacity, and you can start really giving your, your image a different feel to it just by grabbing the magic wand and some background stuff. So remember, tolerance and contiguous on your magic wand, and it'll become one of those tools that you go to more and more to you're, play with. You're really taking advantage of the randomness of the tool there. It's something that tends to frustrate people. It's like, I wish it was more accurate, but you know, on the flip side, yep. it's inaccuracy is, is, of course, can be a creative tool, just like he's pointing out there, so that's well, a really good Because we you know. love textures that kind of have that randomness to mm -hmm. it, and we don't want our images to look exactly like everybody else. Mm -hmm. Well, you buy a couple neat background images, mm -hmm. and suddenly you can make them look however you want just by playing 
around mm -hmm. with the tool. There's something organic about right. it. Right. Yeah. Yet it's technology, it still feels yeah. organic. All right, so we're going to start to wrap things up here, but this week we also have another Peach Pit e-deal, e-book deal. And that book is Picture Perfect Posing by Roberto Valenzuela. That's a great name. Great name. <laughs> you have to do something in the public eye. Roberto like Valenzuela. Just go to peachpit.com slash Kelby1 and enter the code Kelby1 and you can get a great deal on that book as well. We also have another giveaway Speaking for... Speaking of great well, not deals. A giveaway. <laughs> this is a giveaway. That's an e-deal. But then we have a, a really heavy deal for you. <laughs> this is the biggest book I've seen since I had my encyclopedia, encyclopedia collection years ago. Look at this that. This thing is massive. I'm like, holy cow, we're now, giving that away because it's is, a beautiful book. It's a beautiful book. It's jam-packed with some really interesting images. It's called, we haven't even said the title yet, it's called, what is it, Road to Seeing. Road to Seeing by Dan Winters. If you know Dan Winters, it's just phenomenal yeah. stuff. Uh, all kinds of great great pictures in here. This is a phenomenal book. I can't believe we're giving so we're it away. So we're going to ship it out to you. We're going to pay the $75 shipping fee for it. If you win, but how do you win? Well, Corey, I'm glad you asked. You will <laughs> want to go to kelby1.com slash webcast slash contest. And once you get there, you're going to select the show, make sure it's Photoshop User TV, fill out the rest of the information, and any comments you would like, any suggestions or questions you would have for us, and we will randomly draw one person from those to win that book <sighs> after Corey's done. I don't have to out. go to the gym today after all. All right. Well, that wraps it up this week. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us once again here on Photoshop User TV. Thank you, Mr. Pete Collins. Well, thank you, Corey. And your texture tricks. Mesmerizing. We'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.